All right, so today we have a Paradigm subwoofer, model number PDR-8. And the issue is that it is now kind of giving a bit of static when uh, bass is on, a little bit of rattling. So we're gonna take this apart and see if we can figure out what's wrong. So a lot of times that could be caused by a ground loop, which basically means that there's multiple paths to ground for the subwoofer and the amplifier that's being uh, fed into it. Uh, but that's not the case here. We have tried different amps. We made sure that they're all on the same circuit and uh, we still get the same issue. So I suspect that it's something to do with the uh, subwoofer itself. So that's why we're gonna take it apart and see if we can figure out what's going on. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is remove the uh, 10 Phillips screws on the outside that we have here in the back. All right, once those 10 screws are removed, we can gently pull this piece out. And there'll be some wires connected there, so we'll just be putting it gently on the ground. Like that. All right, so the first thing I notice is that we have some very large capacitors on this uh, subwoofer board here, and those can be very dangerous. Um, so anytime we are dealing with capacitors, especially capacitors of this size, we definitely wanna make sure that we discharge those first. All right, so the way I discharge capacitors is I use some insulated pliers, insulated gloves, and I use a 10 ohm resistor. And I just go back, back on the back of the board here and just bridge those two points and make sure that the capacitor is discharged. I'll do the same thing with both of those capacitors. All right, so now that the capacitors have been discharged, uh, we can safely disconnect these three cables here. And that should just pull out. I'm just gonna pull that one out, this one out, and the other one. And then we can take the uh, board out and put it on our desk. Okay, so we have our boards out. And what we're doing now is a visual inspection. And what we wanna focus on is these electrolytic caps here. These guys are usually the first thing to go on boards like this. Um, they only have a limited lifespan. And what we're looking for is like discoloration of the caps, uh, any bulging at the top, which we're not really seeing, and uh, or any like electrolyte that's leaked onto the board, which we're also not seeing. So, so far, uh, everything is passing visual inspection on this board. All right, so now that it's passed uh, the visual inspection, uh, what we're gonna have to do is manually test each one of these uh, capacitors. And what, how we do that is uh, with an ESR meter, which measures equivalent series resistance. And the idea is that there should be really no resistance uh, in any of these capacitors. So as close to zero as possible. But if we read any uh, values with high resistance, um, then we're gonna have to actually remove that capacitor and test it out of circuit. The reason we have to do that is because when we're testing capacitors in circuit, we'll also a lot of times get uh, false readings uh, because there could be resistors or other capacitors that are in parallel or series that uh, cause uh, kind of skewed results. So you get a lot of false positives. But the idea is uh, we can save some time in removing all the capacitors and just focus on anything that gets a, a high resistance in circuit. All right, so the first cap that I'm gonna test is this large 5600 microfarad cap. And I got the negative side on the negative side of the capacitor right there and the positive side to the positive side. And we're getting a reading of 0 0.010 ohms. So that's pretty good. That's pretty close to zero. So I think that cap is probably okay. We'll move on to the next one. All right, so we have our leads connected to the other 5600 microfarad capacitor down there. And we're also getting a very low resistance reading, 0 0.040 ohms. So I feel like that capacitor is probably also okay. I'm also going to test the capacitance in circuit. See what we get here. And we're getting 5,800 microfarads. So that's pretty close to 5,600. I feel like the capacitance is probably okay on this one. And we'll do the same test for the other one. And we're getting close to 5,600 as well. I expect uh, somewhere in the 10% range. So that's pretty close. All right, so next I'm going to take a look at this 22 microfarad cap, which I believe is 22 microfarads. Um, and I'm getting an open circuit, so it looks like I might have to actually remove this one and do a test out of circuit. All right, so to remove that capacitor, I'm just gonna add a little bit of flux 
to the contact points at the back here. This makes it easier to remove. And normally I would probably use a little bit of solder wick to get up as, get as much of the solder as I can off these uh, contacts. But there isn't a lot of solder there, so I'm just going to heat the ends up and then just gently pull the capacitor out from the other side. All right, so we have that 22 microfarad capacitor removed and we're doing an ESR test on it. And we are indeed getting an open circuit. So that is a definitely a bad capacitor that we'll have to replace. It's a 22 microfarad 30 volt capacitor. Okay, so we finished testing all the caps on this board. We wanna test the caps on this board now. Unfortunately, it's not easy to get in there to uh, hook up an ESR meter. So I'm just gonna remove this board. There's uh, two screws here and another screw right there. So three screws, I'm gonna remove those three so I can pop this board off. Once these two screws have been removed, this piece should just slide straight out, just like that. Next, we can remove both of these knobs. And then we can remove these two nuts here. Once the uh, screws have been removed, there's two plastic clips that are holding this in place. So I'm just going to pinch this end here, some needle on those pliers, and push it through. Once those plastic pins have been pushed through, we should be able to lift this board up and flip it over. All right, so we have a 100 microfarad cap here at the end. Test that one first. And we're getting a reading of 0 0.4, 0 0.6, which is good if it's less than 200 microfarads. So that's a 100 microfarad cap, so that one looks okay. All right, so we're testing another 22 microfarad cap and we're getting a reading of 4.6 ohms. That's on the high side, considering uh, that it should be less than 22 microfarads for that kind of capacitor. So we might remove that 22 microfarad capacitor and replace it as well. So just like the other one, a little bit of flux. This one has a little bit more solder, so I'm gonna use a solder wick Soak up as much as I can. This makes it easier to remove and shouldn't break the pads. There's one done. Try to get these pins just a little loose. Wicking up as much solder as I can. There you go. All right, so we're testing that cap that we just removed out of circuit, and we're getting about 3.58 ohms, and that's for a 25 volt uh, cap. We have a 22 microfarad at 35 volts, so we should be in around the 1.5 ohm reading, so we're about double that, a little more than double that, so uh, that's definitely a bad cap, and we'll be replacing it. So we are testing the next 22 microfarad cap and we're getting 39 ohms. Also looks bad, so we'll remove that one and test it out of circuit. All right, so we're testing the third cap that's now out of circuit and we're getting 30 ohms, so that's another bad cap. So it looks like we have three uh, bad 22 microfarad caps so far. My guess is that all these uh, 22 microfarad caps uh, are gonna need to be replaced. Even if they're not bad now, they probably will be shortly since they're all looking uh, to be uh, at a high resistance. So I think I'm gonna pull all the 22 uh, microfarad caps off and just replace them all. So I just pulled the last 22 microfarad cap off and this one's actually reading an open circuit. So uh, definitely a bad cap. So uh, everyone I pulled off so far has uh, tested either high resistance or an open circuit. So they're definitely uh, have been all bad and all of the 22 microfarad caps will definitely need to be replaced uh, to get this working again. Now that the caps have been removed, what I'm just going to do is just put some rubbing alcohol on uh, the board where I remove the caps and just rub away the uh, flux residue with a Q-tip. Alright, so we're ready to put our uh, new 22 microfarad 35 volt caps in. Um, and one thing to note is that we want to make sure that the positive side here, it's indicated with a little plus sign, uh, goes the right way. So if we look at the uh, capacitor, the uh, stripe indicates the negative side. So I'm gonna put this in. Just make sure that the positive side is on the positive side and negative side is on the negative side. So I'm just gonna slide those in. 
like that. And we're going to add a little bit of flux before we add the solder. And we can clip the ends. And last but not least, we will add some rummy alcohol and then clean the flux residue up with a Q-tip. And we'll repeat the same process for the other five caps. All right, so all our caps have been replaced, so we're ready to slide our board back in place. And we're gonna just slide it in and then clip it in with these two white clips here. All right, so now we can replace our screw. And replace our two nuts for these knobs here. We can replace our knobs. And then slide in our speaker input clip. And then we can screw it back in place. Alright, so now we're ready to wire it back in. Red uh, wire goes on the left side here. Black wire is next. And then this clip here slides into place like that. All right, so now I'm just gonna put it in place. And put one screw in just to hold it in tight place. Made our subwoofers put back together. We're ready to turn it on. And then I will turn up the volume. I do not hear any more buzzing. No more static or buzzing or humming. So I think we can call this a successful fix. I hope this video helps somebody else with a similar problem.